and I wanted to share with you some facts that, that the EPA has found about our indoor air levels of pollution. Um, what they actually found was that inside your home could be two to five times higher pollution levels than the outdoor levels. And what that consists of is dust, um, which can contain mites, mold, mildew, pollen, and animal dander. All of that stuff is cycled through the central air system, which completely circulates the air in your home three to five times a day. If you're suffering or anyone in your home is suffering from allergies, the best way to get rid of these contaminants inside your ductwork is to have your ducts professionally clean. Okay, so it's time to move on to the second core of leadership and, you know, gain some clarity because we need clarity in our business if we, so we know where we're going. The, the, the clearer the picture that you have in your mind of what your business to become, the better chances of it actually making it to where you're wanting to go and hitting your destination. So the next one is core concentration. This is a, an extremely important one and it's going to deal with critical thinking, which is long-term thinking. Big picture, you know, we got to think about the big picture in our business in all aspects when, when, whenever we're making decisions. And look, I get it. I mean, when you're busy and you're going to business, you get this feeling of overwhelm. And we all experience it, but I want you to keep that to a minimum. And the only way you're going to keep that to a minimum is by actually taking the time to reflect on where you're going, where you've been, and think about how you're going to get there. Concentration, focus, it's a skill. And your concentration gets broken. It can be, it can take you 20 minutes to get back to the point where you were. Keep those from happening. So whatever you have to do to keep that from happening, we got to make that happen. And you want to block your time out, you know, blocks of time. I talked about Darren Hardy calls them jam sessions. So, and you can, whatever that amount of time is, whether it's an hour or 50 minutes or 45 minutes or 40 minutes, you got to have jam sessions. Um, Brendan Burchard has, he talks about 50 minute blocks. So 50 minute blocks of time where you are focused. That's how you can really accomplish some great things and get things done. During this time, we're gonna, we're gonna focus and build systems and processes. This is how we create order from chaos. You already know the process or the system that you want. You, you already know how you want it done. It's just a case of taking the time to document it, share it with the team, explain to everybody this is how it's gonna be done from now on. Because I and explain why this is why because if we don't do this we miss this and I, I can't you know we don't want to be missing this on our on our customers on the process you know it's not in our customers best interest and we're a customer driven company and you know the integrity through service and, and delivering well through service and and demonstrating the highest level of integrity doing the right thing even when no one is watching all of these things which is your the foundation of your company you you've got to maintain those and in order to maintain those it takes systems and processes so we just got to have the time to get those things done um, planning failing to plan is planning to fail i cannot say that enough if we don't take the time even if it's just 15 minutes in the morning to sit down write three to four major things that you want to accomplish and get finished that day and then work throughout the day to get those things done the better you plan the better your day is going to go you will get a lot more accomplished at the end of the week and not only that you're going to feel accomplished and that's worth a lot just to feel like you have you ever had those days where you just you you're just busy you're busy all day long from one thing to the next one thing to the next one thing to the next and sure you got some things done, but you don't feel like you accomplished anything. And believe me, I have these days all the time if I fail to plan. The days that I plan, I get shit done. And that's where, what we're after. I, we want to recreate that day after day after day after day. And more days than not, I plan what I'm going to do before I actually get to the office to get them done. 
So the better, uh, the more time you spend planning, the more you'll accomplish, period. Always make sure that you get seven to eight hours of sleep each night. When you're growing your business, it takes so much energy from you, um, emotionally, physically, mentally, that you need your rest uh, because it's gonna replenish you, replenish your body, let you think clearly so you can make the right decisions, the best decisions for your business. Let's talk about the first core, which is core connections. So core connections, you know, there's a wide variety of the connections that you need to operate the business efficiently and smoothly, which includes your suppliers, your relationships with your spouse, your relationships with your coworkers, all these things have to be kind of in line to get the most out of every day. Because that's my job as a leader is to help my team get to where they're going. Because if I can help them get to where they're going, they're going to help me get to where I want to go. Your vision, your company vision with your suppliers. Share your mission statement and what your purpose is. That way you can all be on the same team. Um, and that's going to help you get to your goals a lot faster if, they're in, you know, if you're aligned with them. I highly advise daily deposits. I learned this from Wake Up Warrior, it's Garrett J. White. If you haven't looked into his programs and stuff, highly recommend them. But when it comes to daily deposits, what that is is either a video message, a text message, an email, or a note, like a post-it note that you leave somewhere throughout the home. And you, that can be for your kids. Whoever it is that you wanna have a closer relationship you want to reach out to them each and every day with one little post-it note. Make sure to text your wife sometime throughout the day. Make sure to email her or send her a little video message. Hey, just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you and I miss you like crazy and, and I can't wait to be home so I can be with you and um, you know we'll go to that restaurant tonight. I'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. You know, just some quick little video message like that or a text message or or the, the, the notes works great. Um, if you just stay on top of it and keep doing it and make sure to pay attention to them when you get home and connect with them when you get home, then your relationship will, will have a much better chance of surviving you know, over the long haul, especially through growing a business. Growing a business is, is not for everybody. The next core is going to be core capacity. This, is, this has to do with your ability to get these things done. And it's something we have to work on and improve no matter where you're at. If you're at like a, um, let's say, your core capacity for your energy, for instance. If your energy, if you just don't have the energy to finish out the day, we gotta get that up. So wherever you're at, we get a baseline. Where you're at on the baseline, you know, it's poor. Maybe I can only walk 10 blocks at a time or something. Well, we need to improve that. We'll measure it, get better, and improve. But core capacity has a lot to do with just your skills, your, your ability to do what you need to do as a leader, as a boss, as a manager, whatever it is that you're trying to improve. Core control. Core control has to do with your ability to control several things within your life. Control your emotions control your, uh, you know, be being the center of calm for your company. When things get out of control and it's chaotic, you have to be able to control yourself and not let, not fly off the handle because that's how you lose people. That, that's, that's a sign of a weak leader. You have to have the ability to, to maintain those emotions and we'll talk about how to do that and, and, uh, also just more you know when it comes to control controlling your time controlling your attitude <laughs> you know eventually as you move up and you move more into a management slash leadership position your job changes to uh, you know your customers are your team you got to make sure that they need what they that they have what they need, that you're providing the training, the tools to make their jobs easier, um, to implement the processes that they recommend. If they uh, see a better way of doing something, we have to be uh, keep open ears for these types of things. It's you know your way is not always the best way and the only way. You want to put 
strategically placed messages throughout your shop once you get to the point where you have a shop. And I'm going to show you some pictures here. This is our back door before the guys leave. Oftentimes they leave out the back door because they've just loaded some equipment or grabbed some material. So as you can see, we use the beast mode on. Um, the front door, anytime anybody, you know, a customer comes in or the guys are leaving out of the front door, um, we're going to, they're going to see that be awesome today, right? Um, going back into the meeting room or the war room, as we like to call it, um, that you can see we got dedication over the door there. Um, and on the way, um, this office that I'm going to show you here. This door is normally open. Um, that's the general manager, uh, the general manager's office. He's normally here, and his door is normally open. So, um, as they're walking into that room, they can also read this other little sign. And so, there's signs, you know, put up throughout the shop. And I want it to be a pleasant work environment, and I want them to leave with the right mindset. So that's why. Uh, there's stuff placed strategically on the doors when they leave because that's, you know, we want the right mindset when we leave to go serve our customers at the highest level. Your level that you're able to handle a level of uncertainty will determine your level of success. D as in David, A as in Apple, P as in Paul, DAP. That's just uh, an acronym for me to be able to remember what, I'm, what I should be saying. So DAP. Um, which means you're actually closing a doorway when you say this to a customer. That's why we say it is, you know, well, I looked at your system and, you know, ultimately I, I want to design the perfect system for you and your family. I'm here to answer all your questions and um, I want to get the price right. So design the system, answer the questions, price. That's DAP. And the only thing that I ask of you is that if for any reason you feel like I'm not a good fit for you and your family, you just let me know and no is a perfectly acceptable answer fair enough next part of the presentation which is cash c a s h um, and that's just to help me remember once again cash is company um, a is an a plus rating with the better business bureau s is served served how many clients and then h is a hybrid company you know let me tell you a little bit more about our company um, we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. We've served over 5,000 clients just over the last three years, and uh, it's because we've seen a lot of growth. And so what we've done and, and what we've uh, developed into is kind of a hybrid company. And what that means is everybody's trained on service and installation. And what that allows us to do is serve our customers a lot faster uh, because we don't have to wait for you know uh, an installer to be free to go ahead and install a system we don't have to wait for a, a service tech to get free to be able to go install a system or um, or vice versa however that is but um, that's what H stands for hybrid company so um, so when you put it together the DAP and the cash it's you know, Mr. Smith, my job is, you know, I, I came here, that's why we looked and measured everything is because I want to design the perfect system for you and your family. And uh, I'm here to answer all of your questions. So if you have any questions, please just speak up during this time um, that we're going to spend together. And ultimately, I want to get the price right. Um, and if for any reason you don't feel like I'm a good fit for you and your family, uh, you just let me know. And no is a perfectly acceptable answer. Fair enough? Great. Have you heard, how did you hear about us? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about our company. And um, we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Um, been accredited for 10 years now. And we've served over 5,000 families just over the last three years. And we, so we've seen a lot of growth and we're, we stay very busy within our company. But what that's made us turn into is a hybrid type company because that way we can serve our customers at a higher level. Um, everybody's trained in service and everybody's trained in installation so we can get to you much faster that would be the first thing um, then right after that you talk about the cornerstone guarantee so um, but really the cornerstone or the hallmark of our company is our warranties and then you go right into the warranties and you would have your your flip book um, to go through those warranties to help you remember what to say
Okay, this current book that I'm reading at the moment is called Phenomenal Marketing Systems. It's 14 Fastest Ways to the Cash in Any Business. He says that the, there's five top ways to market, and this is how you want to think about that. Number one is your reputation. So you want to put stuff about there like if you're, you know, you got some really great reviews, you want to post them in your social media, on your website, places where people can see them. Um, because that way it's not just you saying how great you are. It's, you have some collaborators, you know, some, some fans of your company and you want to make sure that, that people can see this and that's visible to people. So I know how important that is. Um, there's been Facebook posts where I just, I just make up, which I use Canva <clears throat> and I've got that on one of the other videos, canva.com, but I make up nice, neat, clean looking little posts with just, uh, a little clip from some nice review that we had and I just use that as a post but moving on number two marketing point is experience so you want to let people know that you are experienced you know how much experience do you have how long you've been in the industry I think that's just some validation for people to, to know that hey you've been around for a little while you know what you're doing you know how to do it um, number three is education well, let's back up one. So not just how you do it, but why you do it is is very important to um, try to communicate that in your messages to any marketing that you do. Why you do what you do is what moves people. That's what the Simon Sinek um, TED Talk was about. You know, that's the reason why people get behind Apple is because it's their why. Um, so the more you can communicate that, the better. Um, number three, marketing point is education or training. So if you have any certifications or anything um, that you can tell people about, be sure to express that. Don't leave that. Don't leave that out. That you're like, for instance, we're a train comfort specialist. So we're a TCS dealer. Well, that's something that we need to communicate better to our customers to let them know that, hey, this is this is something that not everybody has. This is something that sets us apart a little bit. So also the training that you do for your group, you know, like um, certain certifications that a technician gets. That's something we can communicate in our marketing messages. Just once again, um, validation. Um, it also lets people know that you actually are spending money on training for instance um it can at least but anyhow moving on systems so that's like you know maybe talking about how much time how you value their time because you have systems how you're gonna have what you're gonna have you're gonna have what you need you know 90 percent of the time when you go out on a service call because you stock your vehicles and you have a system for stocking the vehicles um you have a system for doing installations, you know, you give them a job prep sheet that lets them know what they need to do before you arrive at the home to actually do the work. Um, and then your guarantee. Guarantees are so important and that's why they're, um, you're, you gotta, it's, it's basically risk reversal. You know, there's not many things or products that sell that don't have some form of risk reversal if they sell very much. So you got to have some type of a guarantee that just says, you know, be satisfied or your money back or whatever it might be. A, a free trial offer he talks about in that book. Um, that book's by Howard Partridge, 14 Fastest Ways to the Cash. Pretty good little book. Quick read. Um, I've read his other books. His five uh, phenomenal, the five, I can't remember the name of it, something five phenomenal keys to a great business or something like that and um it's a really good book and i'm actually using something that he's probably going to talk about in this book which is referral certificates anytime you do a call and it's the type of customer that you want to do business with like you gave them a bid for whatever it is the repair or replacement or whatever and then they chose to go with you they didn't complain about the price you know, they're just nice people. They're easy to deal with. Those are the type of people that you want more of. You know, you don't want the the people who bitch and moan about the price every time or who 
jerk you around when it's time to be paid. So when you do get a good customer that doesn't mind the price, you want those are who you want. So what you do is you send them a referral certificate. I've been talking about getting a new vehicle, a personal vehicle for quite a while, and it's just time to do it. And I got a trip coming up and I figured, um, you know, I've got an old 2005 Dodge pickup, you know, runs great, but it's just to the point I don't know where the miles are at, 120,000, something like that. But it's to the point where, like, the last time that we drove to Galveston for a cruise, which was a couple years ago, um, I borrowed my um, my stepmom's car, <clears throat> and I did that because I was I'm just not sure how you know with the mileage getting up on my truck of just yeah that's when things start to start wearing down and you start having a few little problems and sure enough the week after we got back it was like the third day my wife was just going to a doctor's appointment and the, the front one of the front bearings went out like badly like it like she she made it home and had to drive home but we had to get it fixed immediately it was like grinding and squealing and getting hot obviously because the bearings were bad so it's one of those things that um, I just need a dependable vehicle to get me to, to stuff like this and it's not been a big deal my cost of living is um, next to nothing I've kept it really low and um, guarded that so I haven't wanted a payment but it was really interesting I went and took the drive with uh, with the uh, sales uh, lady and she was like she's like okay so let me tell you are you familiar with our business let me tell you a little bit about us we we have um, adjusters and stuff that really value the vehicle. That way there's no, you know, we, we really have the bottom dollar price on the vehicle listed. So there's no wiggle room. We can't negotiate on it. <clears throat> and what she was doing was she was closing the door. So at the end, when it's time, like, I want this vehicle, that I'm not going to come up and negotiate. So I just thought that was brilliant. Two flat, boom on the three feet. Two flat. Boom. Two flat. Boom! Two claps. Boom! This is our year. You gotta have a handful of overcoming objections. You have to in your back pocket every time you go on a sales call. Um, but because it's ultimately just hard to make a decision. And I just went through this buying this car. You know, it was really tough making. You know, and I didn't make it right away either. I I waited at least a day. You know, went and drove a couple. Decided that is the the car that I wanted, and then. Um, my wife's been wanting one for a long time, so, um, and then I just, uh, I just had to think about it, had to be, feel right, you know, so sometimes you're, you're going to get that when you're trying to close a sale, it's, they just want to feel good about it, and that's what I just went through. Anytime we make a big purchasing decision, we want to, we want to feel good about it, and, and sometimes time allows us to make the right decision, so, um, but oftentimes, if, you already know it's the right decision. When it comes to heating air, it's a little different. I just feel like this is the right decision. And there's not a huge price difference, you know, when it comes between competitors. There really isn't. I mean, at the most, $1,000. Well, that's not that much money when it comes down to it. If, to get something that's going to work right, function properly, do what they said it was going to do, and take care of you after it was installed... Those are all huge, major things with good warranties and all this stuff. I mean, the, if you're providing that within your company, then the decision's easy. But it's a big purchasing decision, so people feel like they need to make time. But in this particular situation with service companies, when you know that you're the right decision, that's when it's okay to hold people accountable at the end when it comes down to talking about the financing part of it. Um, it's okay to uh, help them make the decision. So... Um, but uh, by all means, if they're just not ready, then we're not going to force them or push them. But sometimes just um, asking the right questions um, can help them go ahead and make the right decision. Okay, I want to share some things that I learned in Houston um, from my, the training that I went there. For one, I'm using Trello. Trello is a like a job board, if you want to call it, that you can share. You know, it's not much difference than like Google Google Docs, you know, where you can add somebody to it and share a document so you both can add stuff to the document. 
and it updates on both ends. Um, it's kind of like that, but it's just a place for us to have a master list of uh, this is this is the key thing. Whether, no matter what um, tool you use to do this, is you have a master list of all the projects that you want to do in your company or need to be done or get brought up by somebody in the company. And if it's good enough and, and something that needs to be done, we'll add it to the projects list. So that's like a master list. Then next to that, I've got four project bars. And those are the projects we pick one project at a time. We basically we pick up to four, um, but no one person would be on any given project. I mean, it's not that one person wouldn't be involved in two projects, but you basically assign somebody who would be good for that project. Um, let's just say, for instance, somebody comes up to me and says, Kelly, we got to clean this shop. Like, we can't find anything here. <clears throat> and we, we've, like, uh, it's just so much nicer if it was clean and organized, let's just say. Okay, well, that might be the guy who runs that project because he's he has an interest in it. He's brought it to our attention. It's something that needs to be done, whatever the case, if that's the case. For one, we're just not spending money on, on recruiting um, in our businesses, and I'm guilty. I mean, we spend all this money on our regular marketing, but we're not spending money on recruiting. It's something that should be a part of our budget for the year because we always need to be recruiting. Um, one of the things that I've learned also that's a real quick thing that was I thought was a great idea is just, just to put on your business card. Um, you know, we are growing fast. We need help. If you know anybody, send them here or give them a link or have them call a number. Whatever the case, every person you meet, send that because, you know, we're not always recruiting straight out of the industry. Where we're sometimes recruiting from other other places that may be similar. And so it's just nice to keep the word out there that you're hiring because we should be hiring at all times. And the reason for that is because, you know, people are just hard to find. Is to be sure to have a careers page or landing, you know, page within your website. And I thought that was awesome. I actually have a structured breakdown that I'll build it, that I'll put in one of my courses to, to help you figure out what to put on that, um, that I learned. But, um, also, this was eye-opening. It's so important to hire good because 30% of businesses go bankrupt because of internal theft. And I thought, wow, that's like 3 out of 10 go bankrupt because people are stealing from them. So that's why it's so important to hire good people that are honest. And that was like the number one priority is that they are honest people. Above all, everything else is that they're honest. So one of the questions that they said you should always ask somebody in an interview is tell me about a time where you had an achievement or you did something great for the customer or whatever the case um, ask that question but then it's the follow-up question is you say now who can i call to validate that and he said that he's had people like stand up and say well if you need to call somebody i don't need to work here because you don't believe me well you're right you know, I, I, that's what he, what he said he would tell him. You're right. I don't want you to work here if um, you can't tell me that because it's just a s simple case of um, what he's found in the corporate world and and uh, helping people have uh, develop a recruiting program is that people just lie. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's just true. People will lie. They'll tell you what you want to hear while you're recruit you know while you're interviewing and the reason you don't want to just automatically trust them <clears throat> um personality is great you know they have to have a jiving personality a personality that you can jive with and everything uh, you know that you can obviously tell pretty quick if you can get along with somebody uh, but personality is not the only thing it's it's really about honesty um let's see Honesty was number one. Performance mindset was number two. Um, willingness to learn, number three. The know-how, like do they have the hard skills? And then personality was number four, actually. It was that far down on the list because it's more important to have somebody who's, w who's willing to learn and has a performance mindset um, than to get somebody who, you know, just has a great personality. <clears throat> um one thing that I thought was was eye opening to me is that ninety percent of jobs are taken taken by people who already have a job. 
he said when it comes to a team one out of five will always get the job done they make things go right and they're willing to provide you know they're willing they're willing and proud sorry and then you always have one out of five that will make it that that will not make it go right and they're going to make it hard to manage um, when it comes to hiring people also if they have a very low willingness but very high competence those are the exact people you do not want to hire and I've experienced that myself you do not want to hire those people they will not listen they're not open to uh, changing anything about the way they do and it winds up just being a headache for you and the company you want to benchmark every position within the company like who's doing the best in sales who's doing the best in in um, service like who has the most skills like um, who's doing the best in install benchmark what they're doing and then set that as your standard or give them a goal to hit even higher and give them some tools and and some training to get higher but you got to have a benchmark to set a standard uh, be sure to celebrate uh, victories and wins with your company make it visible so you want to share those stories on Facebook um, it said 63% of companies will give their money to companies who are socially responsible, which means you're giving back to the community. But I know a lot of us do this, and I'm, I do it too, but I've never – I don't want to brag about it. I, I've always, you know, I've given without wanting to receive anything back. And regardless of that statement, you should post that stuff because you're being responsible with the money you make, and people like to see that. 63% of people is what he's found. I think he said Warren Buffett says that, you know, you you really want these three things. You want honesty, uh, somebody who's bright and, and knows how to do their job, and somebody who's a hard worker. But if they're only bright and they're only a hard worker, they're, they'll screw you because they're not honest. So you have to have honest people, bottom line. 58% of businesses go bankrupt because of not managing people. People always dictate, they dictate the conditions more than you. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting is, you know, it, it, the normal job search is two to three months. So if you recognize within your company that productivity is going down, efforts going down, um, focus goes down, and it, it gets started and progressively gets worse, it's probably... It's probably because uh, one of my guys just got a sell. They're celebrating out there. <laughs> um, so um, the thing is, is we have to be aware that this is happening and get them good or get them gone. That's what Ellen Rohr says, um, which means just we got to fix the problem. Hey, what's going wrong? What, what do you not like? How can we change this? Or go ahead and let them go if they're actively searching for another job, right? I totally agree with all that. So um, we got to be visible, visible got to be competitive with our offers to attract, to attract good people. Ultimately, we want to attract them. We don't want to have to go search for them. And that's where posting more stuff on social media and stuff and being socially responsible, um, showing our victories, some of our victories, our wins. If the team goes out to celebrate, be sure to post some pictures and maybe a short video on that and tell, tell your customers who are actually on your Facebook page and like your Facebook page why you're doing it. Hey, we hit a milestone and we're happy about it and we're celebrating. Um, but just uh, be sure to share that. And um, let's see. Ultimately, uh, because of the reason of not hiring on personality, he says the root word of that is like person I, P-E-R-S-O-N-A-E, -E, which equals mask. Um, just means that that's the original root word. Is what he said I haven't not looked this up so I'm just going off what he said but you really have to just observe people to detect integrity um, guys I hope this helped in your journey to find good people for your business okay I know that there's this stigma that surrounds sales guys and gals it's one of those things that sooner or later we're gonna get our find ourselves in a sales situation whether you find a bad compressor a bad heat exchanger or a bad a condenser coil, just something, or it could just be a blower motor or a condenser fan motor. Uh, it just depends. There's going to be certain situations where it just doesn't make sense to, to repair, you know, because the unit's old and it and it's just not in the customer's best interest to 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 go ahead and, and repair this old POS system. And when that happens, 
that's okay if they want to repair it, but we're still doing a disservice if we don't at least offer options. And that's what this little mini course is all about. It's, um, it's about the presentation. It's not about um, options, it's about the presentation. So we're gonna go over a presentation. I'm gonna give you an outline for the presentation. That way you know how to build your own, to put your own stuff in there and build it out so you have something to talk to. You actually want a physical presentation. You could build it on your online to where you could share it on the tablet and just scroll through them, or you can just do the old school way. That's the way we do it. It's just on printed, you know, have a printed, um, actual printed presentation to go through. The presentation is strictly just so we don't forget where we're at in the sales process, but it also helps to have a visual picture for the person to remember. So just having a little picture there, they're gonna read some of your review, your reviews that are strategically placed throughout the sales process. It's just something to help them um, really understand what kind of company they're dealing with. So I know we don't like to talk about it, it's just ugh, sales because it's, it's like uh, got such a negative thing connected to it, but it's not. It's serving the customer at the highest level. If you're the one doing the selling, or even if you have people that do the selling and you don't have a presentation yet, this is a great course for you. I'm gonna give you an outline to build your own, along with the rebuttals, so enjoy. Hope you learned something, hope this serves you, and go make money. So with the cold, cold weather and the wind, um, it tends to, obviously it's gonna make furnaces run longer, because if the house is not of new construction, and it's cold and windy, it's gonna find a way into the house. It's gonna, that's, that's your load. It's a, and it's a, the load increases, um, which creates um, a more of a demand for the system to, to turn on and bring the house back up to temperature, whatever the thermostat's set at. So when that happens, it's going to really make so, some of the problems that they may, your customers may or may not have noticed before, it's going to make them more prominent. It's going to make them show up where before they didn't show up because the weather just, um, you know, wasn't wasn't cold enough to make the furnace run long enough cycles. So if you've got a 90% furnace with a dirty heat, secondary heat exchanger, that may not show up if it's running a lot shorter cycles because it the load's not there it doesn't the demand is just not there so we're gonna find that we have more high limit switch problems so always be sure to take a temperature rise first and foremost see what that is make sure it's within specs if it's not within specs a lot of times it is not you know first thing obviously always check the filter um, second thing check the check the uh, secondary heat exchanger if it has if it is a 90 plus furnace check the secondary heat exchanger make sure that it's clear and not restricting airflow in any way shape or form next is going to be check the evaporator coil make sure that it's not restricting airflow in any way shape or form after that it's going to be um, you know I would get into gas pressure and check my gas pressure make sure that it's where it's supposed to be if you find that all those things are good, if they're not, then obviously clean them and retest. Retest your temperature rise and see where you're at and make sure that you're back within specs. Um, it's always possible that this thing's been tripping for, for years um, during cold snaps um, where it might be just enough to get by when it's not quite so old. Or, or the, the homeowner just never realized that it was shutting off because um, it would run for a long enough cycle that would still bring up the temperature in the house. So. Um, also the blower wheel obviously the blower wheel I every single check every single tune-up always stick my hand in there spin the blower wheel make sure and feel it get my flashlight in there make sure it's not dirty um, a class that I took here not very long ago said that if you have a film of dust on the blower wheel like on the concave part that's actually pushing pushing the air um, if the dust is as is as thick as a piece of paper that that reduces the capacity by 20% of what it can actually of the air that it can actually deliver so they also taught us this phrase which I'd highly recommend using um, because 
it's basically it's what you're doing is I need to bring this furnace back up to manufacturer standards so I would use that because that's true that's what you're doing if you pull that blower out and, and need to clean it you're bringing it back up to manufacturer standards you're increasing the airflow by 20% just by getting that dust off of the blower wheel um, other than that then you get into ductwork issues and I don't know about your area but in my area we have a ton of ductwork issues where they're just not um, they're just not sized properly um, they're just undersized so years ago they had blowers with that were rated under I believe they were rated under higher static pressure and that allowed for ductwork to be a lot smaller and it could still deliver enough air that the system would work uh, uh, what it was rated at but if you are finding that uh, the new systems or a new or newer system like 20 year old you know um, chances are it's just it's not working properly because the airflow is just not there so then you got to get into looking into designing the duct system and and see what you can do to make some changes to get that airflow across there you can also check the static pressure um, to make sure that it's close to where it needs to be so all these things need to be checked um, like I said it could get into a gas pressure issue not very often but it, it's surprising how often you'll find that for whatever reason the valve is just off and it's and it's you know set set at four and a half instead of three and a half on natural gas or uh, I don't find it too far off typically on LP but on natural gas yes um, man I've seen them six six inches water column and that's crazy and I don't know what caused that but it's something internally in the valve so sometimes you just have to readjust it um, other than that you know we want to make sure on every single call to check the heat exchanger just to make sure that it's okay uh, and to possibly um, open yourself up for an opportunity to um, upgrade the system and to make sure that this that the customer's safe so we always want to make sure to check heat exchangers any opportunity we get we got to check the heat exchanger um, other than that I'm trying to think if there's anything else that might cause a high high um, high limit switch you know those are the main things and what you'll find as far as a lot of repairs and I you if you've been doing this for a while you you've already found this that if you just stick to the basics on every single service call like 9.9 .9 times out of 10 it's gonna fix it you, if you just stick to your gun stick to your basics develop a system that you go through this is how I test a system every time if not get a checklist um, or build a checklist and that will help um, that will help you make sure that you're doing the same thing each and every time so you're serving their customers at the highest level and determining all the problems and and uh, fixing them so. also one quick thing to check is it could just be a weak limit switch could be that it's been tripping for years or, or just the whole season because they didn't change the filters or whatever the case so what you can do is take one of the screws loose and pop your thermometer in there and see what the temperature is actually getting in there because I found that on some of them, you know, the, the switch may be rated for like 160 degrees, but uh, um, with your thermometer stuck right in there, it's actually tripping like 130. Well, it's just weak. So then just swap it out and see if that doesn't do, do a lot better. And of course, some other question would be just like, you know, how long has it been going on? Does the noise bother you? If they talk about the noise, how often does it do it? Um, does it run long cycles? Have you had problems in the past? We covered that. If you could change it, how would you like it to work? Um, just These are just questions to understand how the system's been working for them, what their thoughts and feelings are about their current system and their current situation. And then you can actually put something together that makes sense for them to help them solve these problems. But without asking the question, we have no idea so sometimes the answer to these questions can turn a regular service call into a replacement sales so it's important to ask the questions always and it's just of the frame of mind of, of serving the customer at the highest level I gave the example of buying a car what if your uncle bought the same car and it had all these accessories on it and yours your car didn't have those accessories and you're looking at his car and you're like what the fuck like, why didn't I get that car? Well, the salesman never even told you that those accessories were available. 
And so that salesman did not serve you at the highest level, right? So it's just a frame of mind. We've got to get out of this frame of mind that is just all about how being a pushy salesman. We're not pushing anything. We're offering options. Let the customer choose. I really don't care what the customer chooses, and you shouldn't either because it's their decision. It is their decision. If they want to go ahead and move, move forward with the repair, great. If they want to replace their equipment, great. It just doesn't matter to me. I'm just doing my job by offering all the options and laying everything out on the table and then letting them decide. It's about serving the customer. It is not about you. It's not about pushy sales. It's not about doing anything but offering them options and letting them decide. I really don't care, and you shouldn't care either, what they go with. If they want to go with a repair, great. If they want to go with a replacement, great. If they want some accessories on there, great. If they don't want some accessories on there, great. It's their decision. It's not ours. As long as it's theirs, then I'm serving them and I'm giving them what they need and what they want. So anytime we take upon the mindset to just repair something, and I get it, we, we are technicians at heart. I'm a service technician at heart. I get it. It's, um, it's what we do. It's what, it's what took us years to learn. And so we like to use those skills, and we like to take something that's broken and fix it. But that's not always right for the customer. So we have to make sure to ask the questions. Um, and first off, I'll say... I don't care what they say when you come in. If they say, we're not buying a new system. You know, I've had customers, you walk right into the home and they're like, I just want to fix it. I'm not buying a new system. Okay. Well, I don't care if it, I don't care if they said that or not, if it makes sense and that the system's 25 years old, they're still going to get an option because I'm doing, I'm not doing my job if I'm not giving them all their options, period. So in order to do my job at the highest level, I've got to give options when it's when it when it makes sense. So I also have to ask questions. And these questions can be really simple. I'll give you a list of them here. Number one, if the thermostat's old, ask them if they want to upgrade a thermostat. Hey, I noticed your thermostat's kind of old. Are you, are you would you be interested in upgrading it? They're a lot more accurate, you know, the new ones are a lot more accurate than these old ones. Yes or no? I don't care what they say but I wanna make sure that I offered it and let them choose. Um, how long has this been going on? Is this something, have you had problems with it in the past? When it is functioning properly and you could, if, and you could change something, what would that be? Oh, nothing, everything, you know, it, I don't know what answer you're gonna get. They may say, oh no, when it's working great, man, it'll, it's like a meat locker in here, it works great. That's great. But now I have that information. I know, hey, the system, when the system works, they they like it. It does the job. Um, are you happy with your utility bills? You know, that's a good question. That's going to let you know if they're just been paying through the nose for, for utility bills. And we can actually solve that problem with new equipment. Um, if it's noisy or you hear a noise, you know, ask them, does the noise bother you at all? Because this is information they're not going to give you without asking that question. Um, does it run long long cycles? If there was one room in the house that you had to tell me that was the most uncomfortable, what room would that be? That question right there, you're more likely to get an answer than to just say, do you have any hot or cold spots? So ask that in a different way. Um, if you could change it, how would you like it to work? How many problems have you had in the past? All these are just um, questions to get answers so you can put something together that will actually serve them and solve the most problems. But if we don't ask these questions, then we have no idea what the problem is, what's been going on. You know, we really just don't know. So, and it's not us to make that decision or decide for them. So, um, another question you might ask is, you know, does anybody in the home suffer from allergies? Much better, I would say, who in the home suffers from allergies? Because a lot of times they're going to say, oh, no, nobody. But if you say who in the home suffers from allergies, completely frames that question a different way, makes them probably want to just answer you. Oh, Karen, 
Karen has allergies, my daughter. Look, I get it. I understand that it's, you know, it, sales is a completely different mindset. And here's how I want you to think about it and might help you shift your mindset is that it's about serving the customer. It is not about you. It's not about pushy sales. It's not about doing anything but offering them options and letting them decide. I really don't care, and you shouldn't care either, what they go with. If they want to go with a repair, great. If they want to go with a replacement, great. If they want some accessories on there, great. If they don't want some accessories on there, great. It's their decision. It's not ours. As long as it's theirs, then I'm serving them and I'm giving them what they need and what they want. So anytime we take upon the mindset to just repair something, and I get it, we, we are technicians at heart. I'm a service technician at heart. I get it, it's, um, it's what we do, it's what, it's what took us years to learn. And so we like to use those skills and we like to take something that's broken and fix it. But that's not always right for the customer. So we have to make sure to ask the questions. Um, and first off, I'll say, I don't care what they say when you come in, if they say, we're not buying a new system. You know, I've had customers, you walk right into the home and they're like, I just want to fix it. I'm not buying a new system. Okay. Well, I don't care if it, I don't care if they said that or not, if it makes sense and that the system is 25 years old, they're still going to get an option because I'm doing, I'm not doing my job if I'm not giving them all their options, period. So in order to do my job at the highest level, I've got to give options when it's when it when it makes sense. So I also have to ask questions. And these questions can be really simple. I'll give you a list of them here. Number one, if the thermostat's old, ask them if they want to upgrade a thermostat. Hey, I noticed your thermostat's kind of old. Are you, are you would you be interested in upgrading it? They're a lot more accurate, you know, the new ones are a lot more accurate than these old ones. Yes or no? I don't care what they say but I want to make sure that I offered it and let them choose. Um, how long has this been going on? Is this something, have you had problems with it in the past? When it is functioning properly and you could, if, and you could change something, what would that be? Oh, nothing, everything, you know, it, I don't know what answer you're going to get. They may say, oh no, when it's working great, man, it'll, it's like a meat locker in here. It works great. That's great. But now I have that information. I know, hey, this is when the system works, they're, they like it. It does the job. Um, are you happy with your utility bills? You know, that's a good question. That's going to let you know if they're just been paying through the nose for, for utility bills. And we can actually solve that problem with new equipment. Um, if it's noisy or you hear a noise, you know, ask them, does the noise bother you at all? Because this is information they're not going to give you without asking that question. Um, does it run long, long cycles? If there was one room in the house that you had had to tell me that was the most uncomfortable, what room would that be? That question right there, you're more likely to get an answer than to just say, do you have any hot or cold spots? So ask that in a different way. Um, if you could change it, how would you like it to work? How many problems have you had in the past? All these are just um, questions to get answers so you can put something together that will actually serve them and solve the most problems. But if we don't ask these questions, then we have no idea what the problem is, what's been going on. You know, we really just don't know. So, and it's not us to make that decision or decide for them. So, um, another question you might ask is, you know, does anybody in the home suffer from allergies? Much better, I would say, who in the home suffers from allergies? Because a lot of times they're going to say, oh, no, nobody. But if you say who in the home suffers from allergies, completely frames that question a different way, makes them probably want to just answer you. Oh, Karen, Karen has allergies, my daughter, you know. <clears throat> so all these questions, um, I'm going to outline them for you and there'll be a download um, just in the next once you click out of this and click to the next uh, I'll put those together for you just something to consider if you it's just all about service a high level of service and when we actually take the time 
to ask questions to our customers, then we can help them a lot better, a lot more, get the stuff that they want done and taken care of. And we're heroes once we do that. So always ask these questions. Always, always, always. Don't pay attention to the, the those those comments if you ever get them. I'm not buying anything today. Okay, okay, that's great. I'm still, if I find it's a 25-year-old system and it makes sense, if it makes sense, I don't care what they say, give the options. Um, Weldon Long just calls it smoke screens. It's people just putting up smoke screens. You know, they have a fear of you. They're, they're, they're scared that you're going you're gonna to try to sell them something. Well, we're not selling anything. We are strictly, we're going to do what you want us to do, but here's your options. And here's why me as a professional, I would go with this particular option, but it's completely up to you, Mrs. Smith. Whichever one you choose is completely fine with me. I'll be happy to do any of them. This will just um, build trust and, and it's just serving your customers. So um, it's doing the right thing always, no matter what they say. Um, I'm still going to give them options because it's the right thing to do. It's not right to, to keep this information from them when it makes sense. So I just had a conversation this morning with my team because we've been not doing so great about uh, just having conversations with customers. And I just got off the phone with one of my guys and what do you know, he just went over to look at a like a no heat situation. The guy was somewhat interested in a bid and he expressed that when he called in to the office. But really wasn't anything majorly wrong. It was making a little bit of noise. But just by having a conversation, my guy just asked, would you be interested in getting some prices for a new system? He said, sure. So that he goes out, fills out, gives him his very top option. Is that the system you'd like to go with? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Just like that, just made the decision strictly from just having the conversation, from just asking. We have to have open, open conversations with our customers. So that's a great story. That's why I want to share that. We just got a win. And so I will bang the gong, baby. That's what happens when we get wins here in the office. But, okay. <clears throat> so before you get into the call and get into presenting options and going over your stuff, we have to get mentally prepared. So I want you to, if you need to, take three deep breaths. Breathe with me. Relax. Prepare yourself mentally to go in and present those options and give a presentation. Don't let the tension with yourself, your nervousness, show to the customer. It's okay to be a little bit nervous, but once you get into the conversation, and it's just a conversation, that's all we're having. But you need to be relaxed, especially when you get to the end and you actually start talking about the money. That's when you really need to relax and be okay with silence. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of that in a little in a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> But I just wanted to get you relaxed and calm before you go into the presentation. Here's some questions to, th to think about. Would you be interested in upgrading your thermostat? Who in the home suffers from allergies? If you had to pick the most uncomfortable room in the house, which room would that be? How old is your home? How long do you, th do you think that you guys will live here? Has it given you problems in the past? Does it run long, long cycles or short cycles? Are you happy with your utility bills? When your system is working, is there anything that you would like to change? Do you ever get shocked during the winter when you walk around the house? Uh, does, I put do anyone, so mind my spelling there, but I put uh, do anyone suffer from dry throat, itchy skin, or bloody noses? If I find any ways that can save you some money, would it be okay to share them with you? That's just uh, a way to frame that we're going to have a conversation after I go down and, and assess what's going on. Um, does anyone in the home get sick often? If I see anything that could increase the safety and efficiency of the equipment, I'm going to bring it to your attention. Will that be all right? Yes, absolutely. All, all customers are going to say yes. Um, I want to earn your business, so if there's a budget that you're working with, could you share that with me? 
Um, there's been times where I've just, if it's just a sales presentation and they're, they're a little anxious and the money, the subject of money has already come up, I just will flat out come out and ask, what kind of a budget are we working with? I want to I want to earn your business. I want to stay within your budget the best of my ability. What do you have to work with? Because some people just have set amounts of money that they're um, and they're going to let you know. They're going to bring money up before it even comes up in a presentation or at the end or anything. If it's truly money, um, and they're really worried about it, they're going to talk about it soon. Um, so don't be afraid to have that conversation. It's just a conversation. If they shoot me some low number, I'll say, whew, I don't think I can get that low, but I'll do my best and we'll look at some options. We'll go from there. Now, of course, when I get into giving the actual presentation, I'm still going to solve way more problems with a more expensive system that has a bunch of accessories on it. Um, and sometimes that's just a, it's just a smoke screen. Once again, there's that word. Sometimes they, they tell you that they can only afford something, but it's just not true. Um, so we just have to make sure that we're just delivering the best value for the customer. But <clears throat> as far as before you give the presentation, um, we have to ask these types of questions so we know what to put in our options. So we solve those problems for our customer. So this is something we need to go through every single time, every single service call. Um, of course, a couple of these questions that I just went through, you'll probably chuck and you know get rid of them if it's just a service call, but before we do a presentation, we might want to ask a few of these, a, a few extra questions here. So it's just good to have the questions, just learn them, memorize them. So they're just, you, you just get in the habit of just offering this stuff every time. And you're, what you're going to find is that you take care, so such good care of your customers because you ask these questions that they're going to just love you. Like they're just going to love the service you provide because you fix things for them things that they didn't think of when they called because they, they were only concerned about the no heat situation or the no cool situation that they're currently going through. What they didn't consider is that last summer when it ran, it ran all the time and it never kept up. And they remember how miserable they were, but they waited because it was still working. And, and so you just brought up a memory for him and it's like, hey, he's here now. Maybe he could go ahead or she is here now. Maybe she can go ahead and fix this now while they're out to look at the furnace or whatever the case. So asking questions really opens a lot of doors. We definitely have to ask questions every single time. It's, it's, uh, it really needs to be a non-negotiable. Like you just have to make this part of your routine. routine. Every single call, ask the question. You know, if you put a boat on autopilot and you're heading to one destination and a big gust of wind blows you off course, but yet, and it blows you off course four feet, do you think you're going to wind up at the destination? No. You've got a course correct, and that's what we're doing is course correcting. Um, we got to get relentless with it. We got to be hungry with it. That was another topic of um, another point, key point that I talked about. Uh, during our meeting was just getting hungry. You got to want it. And I think there's been some complacency going on and that's why we haven't been converting like we should. So I think this is something that every service business owner deals with, but you got to recognize that the, there's a problem and then step up and say something. And if there's more coaching, training, motivation that needs to happen, then you got to provide that for them. But just in two days, we sold $20,000 worth of stuff, a little over $20,000 worth of stuff. So it can turn around, you know, very quickly. And this month for March, we're looking to hit $130,000, but I'm hoping we can beat that so we can... Uh, gain a little bit of ground from what we've what we failed to do in February now they did a study his company or some affiliation or somebody that he was with they did a study and they found that if you offer the premium option first then the mid-range mid-range option then the low option and when you offer it that way, 30% will pick the premium option, 50% pick the mid-range, and 20% pick the economy. 
So remember those numbers. If, as long as you offer um, premium, mid-range, and economy, you offer the top option first. And we always want to do that because, for one, it solves the most problems. It, it, cre it has the most solutions wrapped into a nice little bundle package for the customer. But when you offer it that way, it's 30% for the top option, 50% for the, for the uh, mid-range, 20% for the economy. What they found is if they offered the low option first, 60% went with the low option. So that one little change in your the way you present options to your customers could drastically improve your business, like ridiculously improve your business. So I say that you know people are going to make mistakes, but I don't want you to have that mentality because what you're going to find more times than not is that they're gonna exceed your expectations. This is something that I think can happen with business owners when you are the technician, like Michael E. Gerber's book, The, the E-Myth. When you're the technician, that's what we know, that's where we're comfortable, that's what we love. And then we eventually have to move into a manager position if we're going to grow the company. I can tell you, you're gonna miss feeding off the energy of the customer. Kept sucking me back in because that's what I knew and what I was comfortable with. To be honest, you miss the energy of the customer. You miss fixing things and saving the day. So I thought that was so impactful and important. By sticking to the fundamentals, he was able to bypass people with way more talent than him. But that's so important in business and in life is just stick to the fundamentals. Um, he was obsessed. I mean, uh, that's kind of a given. We probably assume that Kobe was obsessed. And there's lots of stories behind Kobe doing things throughout his career that showed just how obsessed he was and how he outworked everybody. He tells a funny story of how he, um, his teammates wanted to go out drinking. He was like, okay, I'll go out drinking with you, but I'm going to be at your door at 5 a.m. pounding, saying, let's go. It's time to get to work. He showed his teammates that whatever you do outside of work, don't let that get in the way of where the team's going. Crucial lesson to be learned. So if you're doing something, win the business Super Bowl or, or, or go to the NBA business championships, we can't let the things outside of work get in the way. When we come to work, it's time to work. And that was Kobe's mentality. One thing that he did was he, he got to know all of his teammates, right? And he understood what triggers them. He could use that trigger to get more performance out of them when he needed to. You know, it, he was able to motivate them that way. If there's a particular thing they're striving for, if they're struggling, or having a hard time one day, well, you could use that to help them get out of that funk and get moving, and they're gonna feel better about themselves, they're gonna produce more, because they'll be more motivated. But they'll feel better also. I mean, we always feel good. We All of us feel good when we're productive. I don't even know how many NBA championships they won. Find a team that's winning, and I'm gonna show you a leader. One thing that I would have never have guessed is that they watched every single game and picked apart all, all the details and like, oh, he was like, oh, that's where the mismatch is, right? That relates to business. It's like we got to find the little problems within the business. Maybe write a process for them or do some training or something. Keep it from happening again so we can win because the last time it happened, whatever it is, it caused us to lose, lose our lead in the game. We got to know those little things. And that was just by being obsessed over the film. Now, I wish we had some film to watch in business, but constantly be evaluating and constantly be tracking because what gets tracked gets managed. He watched every game. I said equals reviewing the profit and loss and the balance sheet equals reviewing the scorecard because that's the scorecard. That's the business owners and the manager scorecard is the P&L and the balance sheet. We got to look at the details. The challenge is to get things as perfect as they can be. So that's where we have to make moves throughout the business to try to get it where we actually want it to go. I haven't followed Kobe for, for years and years and years. He said compassion and empathy was really tough for him because he was of the mindset like, you do your job. When you get on the court, you do your job. But it was something that he had to learn. So that's all I got for you today. Hope you learned something. Be sure to check out, if you want to increase your sales, go to HVAC serviceready.com what's up guys been here since 7 30 this morning it's 7 40 right now 
I didn't get much business, you know, get much work done today. I had a bunch of errands to run, so I figured I'd finish some things up tonight. And my wife had, was doing something with her sister tonight, so I figured I'll just stay at work and get some stuff done. So getting these coupons done, I'll cut the cut these. So I basically get six coupons per page. They're going to be um, thrown down from a higher uh, place in a, at a hockey game, so they should float down all over the crowd. Um, hopefully it works, you know, that what little marketing we've done with them so far, I can't say it works. Um, and it was fairly expensive. So it's for two years. So I'm locked into next year too. I've only paid half of it. My other half will be due in October. Um, and we asked them about it. Like we don't feel like we're getting our return on investment. So I don't remember them ever sharing this with us, being able to do this, but Anyhow, got that out of them, so we're going to do it. So I'm producing the coupons to, f to f flow, and hopefully um, they'll produce something. So all good movies follow this storyline, and so do good commercials. So to learn that storyline, give me your email. Go to storybrand.com. Give me your email, <clears throat> and... Uh, Get in there, and you'll you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It's really interesting, and that's why it was such a good book because it's just eye opening. And uh, a lot of the times, like I said, these indie films, they don't follow that storyline. They're trying to find a new storyline. Actually, that um, I say storyline. I don't know how to describe it. It's like the same. They're trying to find a new sequence that people will actually uh, grab onto and uh, so it can, so then that would, you know, make a bunch of movies a little bit different than the, the same old stuff where you have, you know, you have somebody who has a problem and then you feel the pain of their problem. Then they meet a mentor or somebody like that who shows them a, a path or a way to solve this problem. Then they face, face whatever they need to face and wind up becoming a hero, right? It's something, something to that degree because you related to them and they got past their fear or whatever it was that was holding them back and... Uh, that's why so many movies follow this same structure. And there's so, you know, the movies that don't follow it, they just don't become super popular. It's very rare. Well, commercials are the same way. You have, you have a problem. Then you have a villain. Um, so, you know, if it's like <clears throat> they personify a villain. If, if the villain is not a person then they'll personify the villain. So like if it's a cleaner of some kind, well, then they make the dust the villain, right? Or like Mucinex, you know, Mucinex commercial, they show the, the mucus guy who's camping out in somebody's lungs, right? He's the villain. And then they show a solution. I mean, you'll see that they, all these things, they just follow, they follow a uh, structure. And so... To be to have a truly successful commercial or a, or a ad, if any way possible, it needs to follow a structure. So be sure to check that out, storybrand.com, and get the book, Storybrand. Um, I wish I cannot remember the author's name, but it, he's the same guy. They actually have workshops now where you can go and they have you know people who are trained to help people build their story brand. Um, but it's what the ultra successful companies are doing. So, uh, you know, I'm apt to want to copy what they're doing because there's obviously it's a formula and it works. So, well, I'm about to finish up these coupons. At least for tonight, I made uh, 450 of them. That'll, that'll be a, a good start. Three different times this story came up in my life real recently. I was reading two different books by two different authors, and 
I saw on a podcast or um, I was either watching a podcast on YouTube or I was listening to a podcast and the story of the two wolves inside came up. So I thought that, okay, well, for some reason, three times in one week, this has popped up into my life. Maybe it's, maybe I should go on and share it to it. Maybe you haven't heard it yet, but there's a story of an old Cherokee and he's teaching his, his grandson about life. And he tells his, his grandson, there's a fight going on inside of me. It's a terrible fight. And it's between two wolves. One is evil and he's, he's got a lot of anger and envy and sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, and inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. And he continued, the other is good. He's joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too, he tells his grandson. The grandson thought about it for a minute and he asked his, his uh, grandfather, well, which one will win? And the grandfather says, the one you feed. What's up, everybody? Today, I want to talk about fear. Now, most of you have heard the old acronym for fear, which is false evidence appearing real. But I want to introduce a new one to you not new, but one that you may not hear very often because we always refer to the old one, but one that's going to serve you a lot better in the future and help you get the results that you're actually after. There are so many fears tied to our lives. And most of the time, it keeps us from growing in one form or another. We fear a lot of things for a lot of different reasons. Being a business owner, I can tell you that there is so much fear to overcome um, that comes in all in all categories whether it be relationships um, whether it be with uh, whether it be with uh, you know making a new purchase buying a building changing your prices new offering new services like there's fear attached to all these things because it's the unknown and anytime we get into the unknown we like certainty you know human beings just in general we just like certainty we like to have we like knowing that's why we're so accustomed to getting into routines and that's why it's always hard to like add new habits to your routine is because you're you, you like you like routine because it's easy. You don't really have to think about it. Your mind and your body are just doing the things that, the, that it always does because you've built this routine, which and this routine is your daily habits. So anytime we have to step outside of that box to do something that we don't normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, it can be uncomfortable. And there's a lot of that that has to happen with being a business owner. That's why business ownership is not for everybody because the stress that that can cause can be pretty high a lot of times. So I wanted to give you something else to think about instead of the false evidence appearing real. When we talk about fear, now you may not call it fear, but there's something, it could be just making a decision. And whatever this decision is that you wanna make, First of all, I'll say that you probably knew the answer whenever the question arose, hey, should I buy another truck? Should I hire somebody else? Should I raise my prices? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I have a crucial conversation with, um, with somebody, anybody, you know, whether it be somebody who, who you work with or um, a relationship of some kind, a family member, a, a spouse, whatever it is, this is different like you're not having these types of conversations every day and you're not you're not purchasing a vehicle every day you're not um, adding somebody to your business every day maybe it's an open position that you just opened and now you need somebody to fill that position you know that's all of these things are new so 
as much as we crave certainty and routine and we've built and we have habits that are built around these things we also crave uncertainty it's another one of the human needs that we have because certainty all the time and routine all the time can create boredom and that boredom gets boring so we decide that we want to do something new or add something new or or have a new experience and that's out of our comfort zone and so it can be and feel uncomfortable which I think is why the false evidence appearing real is it's a pretty accurate description of what fear is like I said you may not be calling it fear it could just be a decision that needs to be made but when you make a decision chances are you knew the answer to it within about two minutes you may not make the decision within two minutes um, I mean you actually probably did make the decision within two minutes but you didn't actually do it or act upon it because you wanted to think about it some more now you can probably think about it for two weeks three weeks four weeks and keep putting it off but chances are you're going to come up with the same conclusion which is the same answer or decision that you came up with within the first two minutes so it's typically fear that keeps us from moving forward on that decision whatever it is and that fear And using the old acronym for fear, the false evidence appearing real, the false evidence is stuff that we create in our minds. We just create this, uh, you know, our, our minds want to protect us because it likes consistency, it likes routine, it likes certainty. And anything outside of that is uncertain, so it doesn't like that and it wants to redirect us back to certainty. Um, it's also easier for us. Certainty is easier for us. It doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, but it's easier because we don't have to do what we are what we're thinking about doing. So this false evidence immediately comes up because our minds like to be our minds are lazy. You know, they don't like to do new things and get uncomfortable. And that's why I've talked about and uh, other people talk about, you know, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable because that's like a muscle. Like you, you, if you take, if you do things that are outside of your comfort zone over and over and over again, you're going to start to become comfortable with that. And that's when that happens, you've reached a con com completely new level. You actually reach a new level just by overcoming your fear and doing the things that do feel uncomfortable. I'm gonna give you another one, which is face everything and rise. Because oftentimes we're just not wanting to face something. It may, we, we may not be getting the results that we want. We may not be getting what, what we need emotionally from our relationships. We may, we may not be uh, getting the results we want from our diet and exercise. We may not be getting, reaching a level of spirituality that we want to reach. So the reasons, so this false evidence appearing real, let's throw that out the window and let's face everything and rise. So when the next time you, you've, you already know the decision, whatever the decision is that you know that you want to make or, or need to make or have made. Chances are you already made it. Within the first two minutes, you knew you know what the right answer is. If it's time to hire somebody, you know it's time to hire somebody. Why prolong the inevitable? Just face it and rise. You reap what you sow, but you don't do both in the same season. There's a time for sowing, and sowing, the definition is to literally to plant a seed. So in our businesses, in our relationships, in our bank accounts, in our health, we're constantly planting seeds. Whether it be eating that one meal that's better for you than what you normally would do, which is eat junk food or eat fast food or whatever it may be. For your business, you know, it's 
uh, planting the seed. We have to plant seeds for our business. We have to constantly be making people aware that if something's going to fail in the future or if there's something that they need, we have to make them aware of it. And that's planting a seed that uh, give them something to think about in the future or think about right now to go ahead and make a move and do what they need to do to, you know, in the HVAC business, have a, a more efficient, more reliable system. So we have to plant those seeds daily, every single day. And sooner or later, you'll start to see the reaping benefits of planting these seeds. In the relationship, it's about, you know, sending them text messages or a little video or writing an email or leaving a little note or writing on the, the bathroom. You know, if, it, if we're talking about your significant other, you know, leaving something for them to see later. Maybe put it in their car so when they go to work, they see the note. Just planting a seed, letting them know how much you care about them and you love them and you appreciate them. Um, and eventually, that, that relationship will reap major benefits, you know, um, as opposed to if you didn't plant seeds in your bank account if you don't put some put some money into your bank account it's not going to grow and you'll never have anything to reap so you have to sow you have to it's it's about taking these little steps daily to be able to someday uh, reap the rewards of it all of these things are going the extra mile they're all doing the things that you normally may not do or if you didn't give conscious thought to it to go ahead and make sure it gets done it wouldn't get done because life happens so if you continue continually sow and you continually plant the seed then someday or as time passes you'll be able to reap the rewards and benefits from all the plants, all, all the seeds that you planted. And that's what it's ultimately about. And what does that mean? That means going the extra mile. That means doing things that you normally would not do. Or taking the extra effort to tell somebody you love them. Or taking the extra effort to tell the customer, or to uh, not tell the customer, but explain to the customer um, what the life of their, whatever it is that you sell, what the life of that particular thing is and what the benefits are for them if they decide to replace it or purchase something or whatever it is. It's taking that, that's going the extra mile. Um, it's also about integrity, you know, because you're not always being, uh, it's about doing those extra things when when no one is watching. That's what integrity is, is going the extra mile when no one is watching. And that can be difficult if we don't get in the habit of doing it and doing it regularly. So you reap what you sow, you don't do both in the same season. So you gotta constantly be sowing, planting seeds in all of these areas of life. What you believe yourself to be, you are. The attitudes you transmit to others will tell more about yourself than the words you say or how you look. Enthusiasm comes from within. It is a PMA characteristic. You can generate enthusiasm by your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It is essential that you develop a pleasing personality, pleasing to yourself and others. Life doesn't stop. No matter what's happening within the company, whether you're succeeding or you're failing, things are still happening in your life. And it gets, can get difficult when you're not there as often because you've got, you're trying to build a business. So... Um, it's a learning experience and there's got to be you got to be willing to accept change and grow personally um, otherwise uh, you'll you'll find you'll find that it just gets too difficult to keep going but as long as you keep pushing every day keep expanding every day keep doing the right things or at least what you think is right um, always with the customer always with yourself with your family you can do it anybody can do it um, but it's not gonna be easy that's one thing I can promise you. Never walk away from any older system saying, oh, it's working great now. Shouldn't have any more problems. Uh, don't, don't, you know, if you're saying that, catch yourself. Stop saying that. If it's an older system, when we walk away, let's say, instead, let's say, everything seems to be working great right now, Mrs. Smith, but I have some concerns just about the age. You know, when they get to be so old, we can never predict what's going to happen. We, we try to catch as many... Uh, 
potential failures as possible, but we can't always catch them all. So I just want you to know it is an older system. It's past its life expectancy, and there could be, you know, you could have some problems in the future. Well, that just covers your ass. And when you cover your ass, there's none of this, you know, you, your guy was just out a week ago and he said it was working fine. And then they just automatically think that you caused this breakdown. Um, we had a compressor die on us uh, two weeks after we maintenance the system and I'm sure it was dirty and that's probably what killed the compressor but they automatically jumped on that bandwagon of saying you know they, they say somehow think that we caused it we didn't cause it it was like a 20 year old system so once again just cover your butt be sure to tell them that it's uh, it is old so you have con some concerns about the age because it's past its life expectancy if it is um, or just that you might suspect that you will, will have future issues just because all the rest of the parts, the parts that you, if you had to replace something, the rest of the parts are old. So just plant that seed, cover your ass, have a good week, guys. So I can remember back years ago when I thought to myself, boy, if the business could just do $50,000 a month, like I, I know I'd be successful when that happened. Well, that's come and gone, and then you know and it but it could be new for for you guys that are just starting out or haven't been in business for very long maybe that's your goal um could be could be twenty five thousand dollars a month i don't know where you're at in your business life but the, i remember another time where i knew i'd be successful when i could wear my nice jeans to work and and i knew i'd be successful when i could wear uh my nice shoes to work. I used to always have two two pairs of shoes. I'd have a pair of shoe, shoes for work and then I had a pair of shoes for the weekends or if I had to go out and do something, you know, with my family or or whatever the case. Well, I've started collecting shoes because I like shoes for one thing, but um, it's nice to be able to swap them up. That way they get to air out, they don't start stinking, they last longer. So I've got a few pairs of shoes now. Um, but I knew I'd be successful when I hit those particular goals. So um, I want to challenge you to write down 10 things. I know I'm going to be successful or I know I'm successful when I'm doing these things. Because when you're doing these things, then you're in alignment and you're congruent with what you actually want. So I'll share with you mine. You know, I know I'm successful when I work four days a week in my business. When I earn 150000 per year when I don't let stress take over. I know I'm successful when I can, when I can manage my stress level. Um, when my coworkers are growing in their personal lives, in their, um, in their career as well, and their skill levels constantly growing as well. I know uh, I'll be successful when, or I am successful when, my company earns a profit every single month. Um, we do a great job during the busy times and we, we earn quite a bit of profit and we need to so we can survive through slower times in our HVAC business. But I want to get to where we can maintain a profit, even if it's small, during the slower times of the year. So that's one of my goals. And when I know I'm working on those things that are going to help me accomplish that, I know I'm successful when I'm working on those things. Um, another one is when I've written my, my next book. I'm I haven't even started yet, but I know that it's something I want to do. I've learned a lot since the first couple of books I've written, so that's one of my goals. So it's kind of a goal thing, but it's it's just a list to help me focus and to help you focus on your growth. Um, I know I'm successful when I have a date night every single week with my wife. I know that I'm successful when my coworkers are hitting their personal goals. I know I kind of hit on that to begin with, but I'm hitting on it again really important for me um, and it makes me feel successful and it's fulfilling um, I know I'm successful when I uh, when I'm making an impact whether it be with you guys on this video the podcast or in my courses that I have um, I want to make an impact I want to help you grow your business I want you to, you to to grow your mind expand your mind because when you change everything changes like when you change your your mindset and you start to do things a little bit differently and maybe you gain some new perspectives on, on a couple of different aspects so, uh, surrounding your business, um, think that's when things really take off and change. So 
this exercise, something you can do, I challenge you to do it right now. Um, just get out a piece of paper and write at the top, I know I'm successful when. Let's talk about slowing down to speed up. Some of you may know this, but years ago, I purchased a flat rate system. I had went to an, like an afternoon class, an afternoon training, and I was totally sold on the idea. I, I, I finally had bought into it. After years of not, not agreeing with flat rate pricing, I had bought into it. Um, the salesman there was really good, and, uh, and he, he did a good job, and I was convinced I needed to switch to flat rate pricing. But then, went back to work, the phones ring, I got busy, Guess what? It sat on the shelf for two years. So after two years, finally, uh, the business had grown enough where I was like, okay, we got to do flat rate pricing. So we get it, we get it implemented and we find that there's a few problems with this particular program because this was a book you had to print. And the book was probably, I don't know, 200, at least 200 pages. And there was a couple of repairs that I would estimate. I'd go ahead and give the estimate to the customer to get approval before I called in to find out what the part was going to cost at the supply house. And when I found, you know, I sold a couple, called the supply house and find, you know, maybe my repair price was $300. Well, then I call and find out the cost of the part and it's $250. I'm like, oh, shit you know i mean well we're, i'm definitely losing money on this job so that happened a couple of times and but i found a miscellaneous section in there that worked really well as long as i estimated my time properly and i knew the cost of my parts then i just i would always make money there was a few times that i would obviously you know get into something more than what i estimated because that always can happen in our business and you lose money on those calls but the majority of the time we made money on service from pretty much that day forward so in order for me to find that miscellaneous section it took close to another year before that happened so now i'm three years behind because i slowed down you know i did i i couldn't take the time to just slow down and evaluate my process and spend the time to enter the information so I could print the book and and figure this stuff out so but once I did and we started making money in service things got easier a lot easier and the business grew it grew it grew quick and because of that I was able to add more people and because of that I was able to buy more vehicles and we could serve more customers so it was a snowball effect. So sometimes it's just that one little thing that if you'll just slow down, get that thing done. What is that thing? You get that thing done, it could exponentially grow your company. If you don't change, you get no different results. So what do you need to do to implement in your company right now that you already know you need. You may already have it. You may have already purchased whatever it is. You may have already uh, learned about it. Maybe it's just something that you have to order or it's something that you have to build or it's a process you need to implement. You gotta get, you gotta get on it and get that done. Especially, you know what happens during the summer when it gets really, really hot and you get really, really busy? Whatever the problems are right now in your company, they magnify. They will magnify and get worse and worse and worse until it starts slowing down again. So whatever it is, you've got time right now. I, I know it may be extremely hot where you're at, but you still have time. You got to make time. Fix it now. Stay out of the field for a day if you have to, to fix it because it will, it will change the rest of your summer and you'll make a lot more money hopefully whatever it is that you're gonna do it's gonna help you make more money it's gonna give you some of your time back you're gonna be able to save some time spend it with the people who you it's the whole reason why you do what you do your whole reason for doing what you do you know it's typically bigger than ourselves so it's probably your family I know it's mine so you got to take the time now to do it to fix the things so you can drastically improve your life and your business and things can actually change but if you keep doing the thing if you're just too busy oh, I'll do that later you just keep throwing it on the back burner and throwing it on the back burner well it's probably never gonna happen so stop waiting the times now do it whatever it is get it done because it 
you already know what it is. I'm sure you do. Okay, so when we talk about optimization, which is what this chapter is about, we're talking about processes and systems. Um, I got the definitions, definitions pulled up on my computer. A process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. A system is a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. So you may have a system for doing your debriefing. Um, you may have a system for doing your quality control checklist on installations, but the actual process is a step-by-step -step labeled out, you know, um, just to separate the two. So you understand the difference between process and system. So I'm gonna start laying out some processes um, so you'll have a system for doing some of this stuff and there'll be downloads. So be sure to check the downloads on these things. But the bottom line is we have to, we have to optimize our entire organization because it is crazy how much time, effort, energy, and money is spent, lost, never gained back from the, from the lack of processes and the lack of systems that are put into our organization as you're growing your company. Your business is your baby, just like your career is your baby. But think about what that means. That means, what does it take to raise a baby? You know, you gotta nurture it, support it, love it, feed it, sometimes with money. You know, you've got to uh, instill core values in it. Um, lessons, lessons that you learned, you know, like not touching hot stuff. <laughs> um, to stay safe well your business is the same way you've got to approach it as a it is a bait it, it is your baby I know there's some business owners out there and but I also want to talk to you about your career you got to treat it like your baby you know you've got to nurture it support it teach it lessons you know um, learn from those lessons so you don't keep making the same mistakes it's the only way to advance in anything. One thing that I wanted to share with you that's really helped me is just having some positive information put up around me. So you can see like right behind me, I've got these little bit of bitty cards. You know, they're not very big. They didn't cost hardly anything on Amazon, but one of them says never, never, never give up. Um, then I've got one that says believe you can and you're halfway there. And then you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I'll go ahead and read this one to you. It's a little bit longer, but um, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words be for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. So I just really think it's important to have surround ourselves. And it's just like the information that we put in to our minds. Um, you know, I, I'm really careful with this. Like I, I you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like, I love animals. And there is some stuff floating around on Facebook that I, I was scrolling through and I couldn't help but see. And that was, like, imprinted in my brain. It was just animal cruelty. And I don't know why anybody on this earth would ever post that stuff, let alone perform the actual act of hurting an animal. Um, but it was just so sad. And I, I'm not saying, like, you know, don't go deer hunting. I'm saying this was these were dogs. And I'm really close with dogs. I just absolutely love them. Grow, was was grown up with them my entire life. My, my parents always had dogs. I have dogs. I got four dogs now. They're part of our family. I, I love them to death. And when I saw that, um, <clears throat> like that was just like an accident almost that I even saw this. But it, it really poisons your mind um, in a really bad way. And I don't want to think about that stuff. It's not that I don't, I don't want to ignore it and pretend it's not happening. Um, and it's just like um, with anything that the news is, is talking about, I'm really careful to protect myself from that stuff too. I don't watch the news. Anything that's um, extremely critically important, I'm going to hear it either on the radio or I'll hear it or I'll see it on my Facebook feed if something major is going down. But the majority of the time, I'm not really out of the loop just because I don't watch the news. Um, it's because it's all just, it's poison for our minds. Um, there's only so much too that we can influence. I mean, I hate 
I, I also don't want to be a, a negative person about that, but the reality is, is there's some things that we just can't, we can't always change, you know, as much as we want to. Can we join organizations and, and, and fight the good fight or whatever you want to call it, um, try to create a movement? Yes, yes, we can, absolutely. So I would encourage you, if there's something you're extremely passionate about, to join a group to help fight the movement. Um, but watching about on the news is not going to make anything better in your life today. It's not going to help anything. So that's why I've chosen not to watch the news anymore. It's, uh, it really kills my motivation. It makes me scared, to be honest with you. It's a scary world when you, when you see just how much uh, stuff is happening that's, that's not good stuff. So, um, and I don't want to think about the good stuff. I want to help bring people up. Um, and sometimes that, that stuff that people are watching is the very thing that um, creates the, the fear in them all the time. And I don't want to be fearful. So in my case, it's right for me, not saying it's right for you, but I choose not to watch that stuff because I don't want to be fearful. So maybe I can help somebody else not be so fearful because I don't live in fear all the time. It's not that I don't get scared once in a while about something that's going on, but um, I'm human. Uh, but I don't want to feed my mind with that stuff constantly. So um, put up something positive. I don't care where it is, whether it's your wallpaper on your phone or your computer or a poster. Go buy a poster. Something positive that you can feed your mind with daily to know that to motivate you, to inspire you, and to help you um, shift your thinking into the positive and, and to stay away from the negative. You know, they call it ants. Um, automatic negative thoughts you know we don't we naturally tend to go that that route and I think it's just it's just our brain wanting to protect us um, but it doesn't serve us when we're not in danger so we end up making up these automatic negative thoughts that just don't serve us in any way shape or form because they haven't happened they're not actually true so um, put something positive up feed your mind you know listen to listen I I said the radio earlier, I really don't even listen to the radio. I'm listening to a podcast, I'm watching a YouTube video, something inspirational, something motivational, and I'm learning. I wanna learn new stuff, so become a learner. And the reason I, I decided to become a learner is because I learned a long time ago, learners become earners. And so the more you can learn, and the more you can apply that in your life, then the more likely you're gonna have some success in your life. Um, so surround yourself with positive stuff it's just like the five friends rule um have some have some positive friends in that list not that you're not going to have some negative friends but be sure to have a couple of positive ones and try to spend some more time with them so, um <clears throat> you know people often and i heard tony robbins say this a long time ago but he says that people overestimate what they can do in a year but they extremely underestimate what they can do in 10. so it's just long-term thinking versus short-term thinking. I've had many discussions about this um, in the past, but you know, it, looking back 10 years from today, I never would imagine that I would be doing what I currently do now in my business. I wouldn't imagine that I would be where I'm at now in my relationship at home. I, I would never imagine a lot of the things that have taken place, the, the experiences that I've had, the places I've been, the people I've met, I would never have imagined that this this would have happened and the reason it did happen is because I started I ha I I knew who I wanted to become and I think that's one of the first steps is I had a vision of who I wanted to become and I'm still evolving I want to be somebody completely different a year from now I'm going to know that I'm making progress when I can look back 1 year from today and know that I'm not the same person I don't want to be the same person. I want to be an enhanced version of myself. I want to be better. And so it starts with that vision. When it comes to any type of transformation, you got to be able to see who you want to become and then start taking the steps to get there. Start watching the, the YouTube videos. Start, start um, writing down your goals. Start envisioning what it's going to feel like, what it's going to be like, and then just embrace that. And then enjoy uh, enjoy the experience you know of reinventing yourself even though it might be difficult at times do your best to to enjoy it 
know that you're becoming somebody different, that as hard as it may be today, six months from now, it's going to be one of those things that's easy because it's behind you, because you learned how, because you're you're turning into somebody who you want to become. So whatever that is, I don't know what it is for you, but I hope that you 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 take some time for yourself, give yourself permission to dream and go out there and, and become the person you want to be. So happy Transformational Tuesday, everybody. You are the number one asset in your company. Take care of yourself, relax. Um, try not to think about the business too much, um, but maybe Monday evening, it might be time to think about it a little bit. And Monday evening, I want you to think about two things. What went right this summer? What went right? What do we do really well? And then think about what went wrong. Where could we improve? I know that um, we had several challenges that popped up this summer, and that's the thing about summer. That's the thing about busy, uh, you know, when, when the weather cooperates and our phones start ring, ringing a lot and we start getting busy, any problems that we have, we may not even recognize that we have a problem there until you get busy. <clears throat> Excuse me, until you get busy. When you get busy, those problems are exposed. They're magnified. And you begin to see, oh, shit, we didn't do that right. We're not doing that right. How can we fix this, you know? And you might make some decisions right there on the fly throughout the summer to fix those problems. Um, but there's probably a few of them that is going to require more time for you from you in order to correct. So now's the time to start reflecting and write some things down. What um, First, determine what went wrong. Once you know what went wrong, then you can actually start to dissect that and say, okay, well, how could we, what could we do to prevent this problem from happening, happening again? So being adaptable is part of becoming a high performer. You have to be able to shift and move whenever you need to. But here's the thing that I really want to stress to you is that when it comes time to make a change of some kind and adapt, the more resistance that you have is going to equal more stress. And the reasons for resistance is typically fear. Now you've all heard of the acronym false evidence appearing real. I like the one face everything and rise. I like that a lot better. So that's the one I use. Um, but the bottom line is more stress equals unhealthiness. You know, you're just not going to be healthy if you're just so uh, unpliable that you're so rigid in your day-to-day -day things and, and you're so resistant to change it's going to create more stress and it's going to be unhealthy for you. So, you know, the bottom line is they say that there's only two fears that we're born with. We're born with the fear of falling and loud noises. And the rest is learned. It's all learned behavior. So think about that for a minute. But I'll also tell you about when it comes to resisting change, there's really three points of fear that we actually deal with, which is the fear of uh, the fear of loss, you know, the fear of losing somebody or a relationship or a position, um, could be a home, your home, um, could be your status amongst your peers, you know. <clears throat> um, the next thing is that we fear when it comes to change is the fear of the process itself. So maybe if I wanted to lose weight, you know, <clears throat> uh, maybe I'm healthy, maybe my wife isn't. I'm just using this as an example. Well, I may uh, lose part of my relationship with her, so I might be fr afraid of that if I get in shape. Um, but, I, but the next is the process, the actual process itself. So I know the process is going to be hard. It's not going to be fun. So that keeps me sometimes from moving forward. The last thing that keeps us from moving forward and adapting is the fear that once it's all done and we actually get to the outcome, it's not what we thought it was going to be. So think about that. Those are the things that keep us from changing. But the bottom line is change to not change. It's very unhealthy and it's going to create more stress in your life. So whatever you think you need to change and want to change, just do it. Just do it. Just face the fear. Face everything and rise. So that's all for today, guys. But I wanted to share a lesson with you. So I uh, recently read a story about Beethoven. He had finished 
you know, playing a beautiful song on the piano. And um, I don't know what you call those for a piano. Uh, my first instinct is to say s s uh, a symphony, but that's probably not right. But anyhow, he played this beautiful piece on the on the piano. Of course, he's Beethoven, right? And so the woman, um, there's a woman who was listening, and when he finished, she was like, she was like, oh my God, that was so beautiful. I wish that I had your God-given talent to play the piano so so beautifully and masterfully. And Beethoven says. You know, if you practice for eight hours a day, every day for 40 years, you too can have this God-given talent. So of course the story is a good explanation or a good way to, to understand that success doesn't happen overnight. You know, I follow a lot of people on YouTube, a lot of really successful people, and it seems like they just arrive, you know? And the bottom line is nobody arrives. It takes years and years of practice and years of learning and uh, and uh, overcoming obstacles and just having the perseverance to continue to do that so you can have that big win someday and that's what i wish i would have known um, when i first started my uh, journey in business um, is that it you know i thought that i was just going to go out and make all this money and it was just going to be awesome and that is just not the case you know tony robbins says that you know, starting a new business to have more free time, which is what I thought I would get, is like having a baby to have more free time. You know, it doesn't happen. It's going to consume your time. It's going to consume your energy. And so just having the perseverance to just keep going and remember that, that success is just a game of inches. You know, it's small wins stacked on top of each other till, till soon you've got a great big hill and you might be able to build a mountain. And uh, that's what it's all about. Um, it's not that life won't improve along the way. You, uh, bank accounts don't grow without making deposits, right? I mean, we can all agree. It's not going to grow if you don't deposit some money in there. Well, relationships are not going to grow if you don't deposit some, uh, make deposits towards that relationship. Now, that can be a multitude of things. You know, it could be writing a nice letter once a week or daily or a text message or a video message. Um, it could be just verbal. It could be telling somebody how much they uh, you appreciate them and how much you love them. It could be it could be a multitude of things. You get what I'm saying. And now those are think of those as deposits into your relationship. Then think about deposits into your body. Like if I want a healthier body, well, I need to eat better. Um, every time I eat a good meal, that's making a deposit. Every time I exercise, that's making a deposit. And my bottom line is just that nothing grows without making deposits. So you have to make daily deposits into these things so they can grow and get better and get to what get and and turn them into what you want them to be. Um, because if you don't turn them into what you want them to be, then your life conditions, which is what you're currently living with and what you see around you, are not going to equal the blueprint or the idea of what you thought your life should be at this time. And when that happens, it creates unhappiness. So find things to do to make those deposits daily so you can stay in alignment with what you, with your expectations and you'll be happier. What's up amplifiers, it's Throwback Thursday and on Throwback Thursdays I talk about stuff that it's knowing what I now know. Like what would I change knowing what I now know? And here's what I can tell you is that knowing what I now know, I would have modeled somebody who was getting the results that I wanted in my life or my business or my spirituality or my relationships. I would have modeled somebody who's already getting the results that I'm after because they've already done it. They've already put in the hard work and they know what works and what doesn't work. And this is so true in so many aspects of our life is just to model what's working. So what they're saying, so think about that this way. When it comes to human behavior, what if your job for the last 10 years or 15 years or 25 years or 30 or 40 or 50 years, however long you've been working, if your job was to learn human behavior, think about the insight you would gain and the information that you would learn from studying that that's all you did was study these things so I want to listen to the people who have already done that and do what they're doing and here's what they're saying 
is that when it comes to any success, any amount of success, and that's success to you, like your version of success, not my version, you know, not my cousin's version, no, your version, whatever your version of success looks like, it's 80% psychological and 20% mechanics. And so if we break that down even simpler, it is 80% of the work is just your mindset. 80%, if you get your mindset right, the other 20% is the mechanics, which is the actual doing the tasks that need to be done. It's the actual physical labor. It's the actual work that you have to put in. So I can tell you if I would have known this back then, if I would have found this information out and got, got, got over some of my limiting beliefs, got over my, my fears, and that's all right here. It's in my mind. It's not, re it's not reality. It doesn't, it doesn't actually exist. It's only in my mind. So if I could have gotten over that stuff sooner, I can't imagine where I'd be at today in my life, in my career, in my success, my picture, my blueprint of my success. So 80% mindset, 20% mechanics or work. What should we spend our, the majority of our time doing? We need to get our minds right. Once we get our minds right and get past these fears and limiting beliefs and all the shit that's holding us back, that's when the 20%, the actual work, it becomes a lot easier, a lot easier. Today we're gonna talk about the six things that hold us back. Number one, believe it or not, your friends. Now we've all had friends that you know tell us things like, oh, that'll never work. I don't know why you're spending so much time on that. Why do you work so hard? You know, all these different things. Those friends, they don't wanna see you leave uh, their little circle. They don't wanna see you go on and, and do better than what they're doing. So a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, they're gonna hold you back. Relatives do the same thing, and that's our number two on the list, relatives. You know, they can really hold you back by being discouraging and not, not, um, you know, even in their own loving way, they could be saying things like, you don't need to work that hard, do you? You know, you don't really need that, do you? Well, it's not up to them to decide what you need. That's your decision. So that's number two. Number three is pessimists. Now we all know pessimists. These are the people that when they walk in the room, they drain energy from the room. Where we are trying to be that light in the room. We're trying to be um, somebody who adds energy and, and adds joy to anybody that we're around. So you gotta watch out for the pessimists. You know, there's, there's a ton of them out there. And quite frankly, I think it's just people that have just given up. They've given up on their dreams that they had at one point, because everybody has dreams at one point or another. But at some point along the way, life kicked them a few times and they just decided to not get back up and decided to use excuses instead of um, going after results. You know, they, they have reasons instead of getting the results that they actually want in their lives. So pessimists are a tough one. Another thing is guilt. You know, we're, we feel, we'll feel guilty by leaving our friends, you know, our coworkers, our relatives, all these people, we'll, feel, we'll actually feel guilty for doing better for ourselves in our lives. And this is a big one because your own guilt can really hold you back for many, many years. And so how do we overcome that? We have to realize that when we get better, everybody gets better when we have more to sh when we when we gain more knowledge and we gain more gain more money or more success in our lives whatever success looks like to you we have more things to share with the world when that happens so you got to get over that guilt because what will happen is when you can share more and you learn more and you do more and you be more or you or you become more you have a lot more to give in the world so 
let that be the guilt that you're not doing as enough as much as you should or you're not um, you're not sharing what you currently know with everybody let that be the guilt not not the guilt that you place on yourself for for stepping up in your own life next is society you know a lot of times just the conventional wisdom that we've grown into in our society is wrong it's just flat out wrong so there's a lot of beliefs that we all carry that I would really have you consider the possibility of just questioning those beliefs because they're not all true just because that's the way it was doesn't mean it's the way it still is today so that can sometimes keep us from doing the things that we really want to do in life so don't let that stop you and last but not least of course we got fear remember what I said about fear it's not um, false evidence appearing real stop thinking of it that way think every time you get scared of something or or become worrisome face everything and rise think of it that way face everything and rise that's a great ac ac acronym and I love using that instead of the the fear everything and run or false evidence appearing real so just face everything and rise so that's all I got for you this is these are the six things so if you can overcome these things in your life things will start to shift in a positive way in your way so the story is that Superman gets hit on the head and gets amnesia and he moves in next door to you now he's your next door neighbor and you know what Superman's capable of. I mean, he's the man of steel. He's, he's, uh, saves the world and, and is a power for good. But here he is living next door with amnesia. He doesn't remember who he is. He doesn't know what he's capable of anymore. He doesn't understand because he's got amnesia. So, you know, he gets involved into watching Netflix and eating Cheetos and gains weight and uh, turns into a negative Nancy and uh, you know because you know what he's capable of you go next door and you ask him you know hey come on Superman you're better than this you've got more in this like you're, you're capable of so much you're a superhero and he just says nah you know I gotta watch the next season of Game of Thrones I gotta watch the next season of of uh whatever it is that comes out. You know, he, he's more excited about that than he is about his life and what he can create in his life. And you just can't convince him. And that's how, um, you know, hearing that story, it makes me think, I mean, it makes me not only frustrated with myself, but frustrated with um, everyone else, to be honest with you. Frustrated that I see so much potential in other people and I see a lot more potential in myself and so that's what's the, the frustrating thing that is about it it's like we all have amnesia that we don't understand just how capable we are and how powerful we are to design the lives that we love and um, have the better things in life that we all want so I hope that this meant something to you I hope you listened to it I hope you actually clicked on it and listened to it and let's wake up, you know, let's wake up from our amnesia and realize just how powerful and capable we are. Psychology mastery. So one of the ways that we can direct our thoughts, that's, that's what it is. It's being able to control what we're thinking of so we don't get off on these little rabbit holes, you know, that we have a hard time pulling ourselves back out of, is to ask ourselves some questions. So think about some of the questions maybe list two or three questions that you can just ask yourself to come back to the present moment get present realize that the sky is not falling that, that uh, you know the walls are not collapsing and that can help direct your thoughts to something more positive you could say you know who am I serving today um, what are my um, what do, what have I accomplished today you know, that can sometimes be a good question just to reflect and say, hey, I did get that thing done. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be that you got the kids to school on time or you, um, you know, you, you ate healthier today than you did yesterday. Or you took the stairs instead of the elevator. It doesn't have to be big. 
but it has to be something that can make you feel good about yourself. You know, that's what it's about. And it's about just directing your thoughts in the right direction and staying out of those pits. So don't put yourself in a pit. That's it for tonight, guys. Get Amplified.